seems out of control. Be still and know, be still. That time, that time is still in control. Is still in control. Be still, be still. That my God. That my God. You might have to cry. But you got to know. For some time, for Abraham, it was 25 years. For you, it may have been five years or five months. But there comes a time in your life when you recognize that God is just a title. But his name is El Shaddai, the almighty God. God is his title, but his name. Is Jehovah the people in your life tonight that will seek to condemn you, rebuke you, chastise you, demean you, and all they want is to own you? And as long as you free, you good for nothing. As long as you own your own, you good for nothing. As long as you don't do what they want you to do, you good for nothing. But the minute you bow your head to bail, the minute you become an Uncle Tom, the, 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 the minute you sell out your community, that's when they brag on you. We got us a good boy. This same God that you have believed is now <laughs> calling your name. Is there anybody here? You don't know what he wants, but he wants you. And that's all you need to know. Is there anybody here? You don't know how the conversation is going to end. But you came to empowerment today to say, here I am. You log on to worship today to say, here I am. I ain't perfect. I ain't rich. But here I am. Because when you're doing the work of the Lord, it's, it's, it's not going to be the demons that you have to worry about. <laughs> because demons got enough sense to tremble at the name of Jesus. And, and when you are doing the work of the Lord, it's not going to be Satan that you got to worry about. When you are doing the work of the Lord, it is so called church folk that want to criticize, overanalyze everything that you do. God gave you what you have. Can you hold what you have? You telling God you want an increase. I pray for increase. Increase, increase. And God, like, if I pull, see, what the Israelites missed in the wilderness, God wasn't just trying to punish them for 40 years. God was trying to get them to know who he was in the wilderness and to take the lesson from knowing him. Because God knows us like you do the Israelites, that once we get into the yonder land, once we get into our promised land, we will be so busy trying to enjoy the fruits of our labor now we forget about God. The only time in the Bible when Jesus got so vexed, he became violent, was when brothers were oppressing other brothers. So if Jesus could be offended by this, if Nehemiah could be offended by this, who are you to say, well, that's just how it is? Who are you to turn a blind eye? to oppression on oppression uh, when we kill each other when we rob from each other when we lie on each other god is his title but his name is jehovah nisi god is his title but his name is adonai the lord is my master Tells me where I ought to go. You know the title. I know the name. Jehovah Jireh. He is my provider. You know the title. 
you doing? They upset that you are doing it. And you have been with God for some time. For Abraham, it was 25 years. Good evening and welcome to our Transform You Bible study. I'm delighted to have you here on tonight. Uh, we will begin with a word of prayer. Uh, God, we thank you for tonight. We ask that you use me, show us your way, your truth, and your light. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, we pray for those who are here those who are watching online, those who are traveling to get here, we ask that you bless them to make it here safely. We pray for those who are here. They be not distracted, and for the next 50 minutes, that they give you, your un give you their undivided attention. In Jesus' name, we ask it all. Amen. Proverbs chapter 30, beginning verse... 16. And as you're finding that and the screen is getting that, I want to thank God for you who are here on tonight. Um, we had a family join the church Sunday. A uh, whole family, a husband, a wife, and two lovely children. But what a lot of you don't know is that after church, we had three sisters, blood sisters, come up to me and say, Pastor, I want to join the church. But, amen. But uh, we didn't walk down the aisle. And uh, one of them was pretty shy. She said, Sister Matt, do I, do I have to walk down the aisle, join the church? And I'm like, I done read my Bible several times. And I ain't never heard once, I never read once that you had to walk down the aisle of a church after the invitation of him in order to be a member. No, I said, if you want to join the church, you can join right now. And so I took her in and she, they took all three of them. So what I did, one of them, Reverend Dargan, the other sister said, I want to join too. <laughs> and then the other one said, I want to join too. So we got three sisters. I got a picture of it Troy took for me. I got a post. I hadn't, I hadn't had a chance to post much. But, um, but yes, yeah, so we thank God. And I want you to know, I want you to know, I want you to know that in any function of the church, be it church service, be it um, um, choir rehearsal, be it be it a fisher board meeting, be it a Bible study. If you want to join the church, you can join the church. You can join the church during an during a office hour with the pastor. You know, anytime, anytime the doors of the church are open, the doors of the church are open. I just said something. Anytime the doors of the church are open, Sister Gail, the doors of the church are open. And, and, and I'm never too busy to bring someone to Christ and um, to have someone join us in membership. I'm never too busy, never too busy. So I did all that talking, hoping that you all found in your Bibles, Proverbs chapter 30, Proverbs chapter 30, and have a pretty busy week, pray for me tomorrow. We, have our leadership Baltimore retreat at Pearlstone in Town. I thought it was Reistertown Road. It's in Reistertown, Maryland. So I don't know where that is. I hope I have phone reception. It's in the wilderness. I'm going to drive my CD player down there. And, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, do I have to order some food? Is there any grocery stores in Pearlstone? Take everything I need. Lord have mercy. It's the will. Okay, well, I'll be in Pearlstone tomorrow and tomorrow night. 
so I hope they don't have any bed bugs in Pearl Stowe. <laughs> so we praying for the pastor. Um, um, Proverbs 30, verse 16. Y'all can swim a little bit. I can't tread water, though. When I was learning, true story, I hope y'all find the text in your Bibles. True story, while I was learning how to swim, in Eufaula, Alabama, at a pool, um, I went every session. I learned how to swim. I learned how to, you know, do all the butterfly, the frog, all that kind of stuff. But the pool, the, the depth of it was five feet. So, Sister Linda, I never learned how to tread water <laughs> because I could just stand up. Like, what y'all paddling for? They all, they swimming, doing the treading of the water. I'm like, I'm just standing up, <laughs> you know. So I can do everything in the water but tread water. I can't stand still. So if I'm, I'm that guy the pool always swimming. I got to be moving because I can't, I can't tread water. So, so yeah, that's a little funny fact because I always could just stand up in, in the pool. Even at, I learned how to swim at nine or ten, so I was five feet then. Um, yeah, so great for height purposes, but terrible when you're trying to learn how to swim. Proverbs 30, verse 16. Um, no, yeah, verse 16. Mm -mm. The second half of verse 15, there are three things that are never satisfied. Ye four things say not. That's the 15B, the second half of it. It is enough. What are those things that never say it is enough? The grave, now we're in verse 16. The barren womb, the earth that is not filled with water, and the fire that says is not enough. We last week, we last week talked about the two, the two, Headed leech that 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 are the two daughters that the leech has, and they the, the 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 two daughters of the leech, and we know the leech is the horse leech that attaches itself to the horse when the horse goes to get water. It attaches itself on the nose, on the nostrils, and on the inside of the mouth, and it says, "Give, give." people that you have blood sucking parasites in your life. That the only language they know is give, give. They take us. They just take us. They just take us. Now the second half of that verse, there are three things that are never satisfied. Take us. Never satisfied. Yet four things say not it is enough. Things that would never say it is enough. What's the first thing? The grave. Now this is the this is the the nice pious uh, King James translation, or even NIV. But really, what that word grave means is hell. Hell is never satisfied, though it is full. <laughs> It never has enough souls. Never has enough souls. Hell will never stay filled to capacity. It will take a new soul every day. Hell. Whereas heaven, you have to have permission to enter. Y'all have been to these exclusive parties that y'all don't invite pastor to, Sister Danny. Y'all have gone to these things where if your name is not on the list, I don't care if you are the pastor of Empowerment Temple. Miss Berta didn't put your name on the invite list. So if you cannot show me your name, 
Bro Simmons, we could have gone to high school together. Where you go to Poly City? Poly, okay, you went to city, Kevin. But you are not on the list. That's what heaven is like. Where's the place that just take everybody? I'm talking about in Baltimore. <laughs> give, me a, give me a play. You may, not, you may not want to offend your neighbor because it may be their school. Um, but a place or a thing that never, tell, you know that you don't want to say it in church, a place that will take anybody. Because he took the words of my mind. The casino. They let the casino. I got that. It's a blues song. But anyway, yeah, most of the time, places that take anybody are places you don't want to spend much time in. Think about that. You let that marinate on you. If you get nothing from this Bible study in the first 10 minutes, places that will take anybody are places, even if you go, you don't want many folks to know. Or how long you going to, you, you don't plan to stay there long. Right? Another place that take anybody. The jail. Take anybody. The jail will take you. You don't want to stay there. But the jail, the casino, places, and I'm, I can name other places too, but I'm, I know y'all trying to be super saved, so I respect that. But you thought it. <laughs> you thought it. I'm not going to say it because y'all not saying it. Y'all trying to be y'all whatever. But hell is one of those places that takes anybody. And it is never full. It's never, you never going to go to hell and they say, well, all the seats are taken. Huh? That's not going to be a place where, you know, we, we close. Nah. Hell, all, just like the casino. In other places y'all don't want to mention, open all the time. Y'all don't want to say, the trap house. Somebody said that the... the <laughs> I was going. I was waiting on somebody to say that place. People dance now nah, in the casino. Well, they may dance the casino too, but not this. <laughs> Never close, bro, Sessa. I don't know. I don't. I wouldn't know. But they just. I heard somebody just said. Never close. Right. They never feel the capacity. And it's funny, fire marshal don't bother them kind of places. Hmm. They'll bust up the church every Sunday if they could. But them kind of places, I don't know. They don't have, you know how you go to restaurants, they have maximum occupancy. Those places don't have those kind of signs. And what's that, what else is not full? Satisfied. The barren womb. The barren Womb. This one is kind of, um, kind of heavy because it talks about, and it's a tough topic. I, I, I get it. I hear you. I understand. The barren womb is a place. Describing, you know, the, oh, a woman's body part. Um, but it could be really synonymous with anything that has emptiness. And the despair that comes with emptiness and unfulfilled purpose. The barren womb, emptiness, unfulfilled purpose, are things, emotions that are like quicksand. 
and your mind never registers enough. Stop thinking about it. Stop worrying about it. And if you are not careful, you can lead yourself to a mental depression. Thinking about unfulfilled purpose and emptiness in your life. The barren womb or an empty purpose filled person never says enough. My, your mind you know, sometimes, like, you can't get this thought off of your head. You know, when, when you feel you missed the mark, when you feel a strong sense of loneliness, loneliness never puts out loneliness. You feel lonely, and get this, what do you do when you feel lonely? You don't want to talk to anybody. So you are fulfilling what? Your own feeling of loneliness. You feeling lonely, you feeling unfulfilled, you feeling empty, so you just want to go and stay in the bed, ball up. You don't want to eat, don't want to talk to anybody. That emotion mentally never says enough. You never want to, it does not cure itself. That's why mental health is so important because when you start thinking certain negative thoughts, those thoughts are not designed to repudiate themselves. So you need fresh thinking, but your mind constantly stays on the negative. Yeah, because your mind is a mirror of your body, and your body, your immune system seeks out things that are wrong. Your white blood cells seeks out things that are wrong, and it attacks them, and it tries to fight them, and that's why you fight your viruses, and you fight your foreign bacteria, which is good. But your mind tries to do the same thing that your body does to disease. But your mind is not equipped to attack those negative, empty, unfulfilled, purpose, depressive thoughts. So it never says enough, 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 enough. No, your mind, you're trying to figure out what's the answer. How, 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 you, you're thinking about it enough. Well, uh, well, what is it that I can do? Or, or uh, how is it? No. Sometimes in your life, and I hate to, you know, be the bear, if you want to call it this bad news, I call it freedom. You got to learn how to let bygones be bygones. You got to learn how to take L's. And realize that you are, it's a bad word, I know, in the church, but you got to realize that you are human. You're human. And as a human, sometimes, what? Y'all can't say it? You make mistakes. And sometimes they're not even mistakes. You want to do them. Mistakes are when you put on a blue sock and a black sock because you thought you had on two blue socks. That's a mistake. Well, you know, I just, I didn't, it was bad lighting in my closet. So I put on a blue sock and a black. I got mine matching today, so uh, you know, I'm, I'm not talking about myself. But that's a mistake. A mistake is you calling me Tyrone and my name is Robert. That's a mistake. Right. But sometimes we just do stuff because we want to do it. And it's not it's not right. But I just want to do it. 
And there are times if you allow those things to stay on your head and your mind, it will drive you crazy. And you need to tell yourself, own it. I did it. But don't let stuff stress you out. Because guess what? It will never say it. That thought will never say enough. Enough. And if you're not careful, you will get this emotion. I don't need to live. I am, I'm just not, I'm not who I thought I was. I'm not who they thought I am. Let me just kill myself. We just talked about Judas Sunday. The only difference between Judas and Peter was what? Where they went after they sinned. Both of them, both of them sinned. Peter betrayed them. Judas sold them out. But Peter went to be amongst disciples. Judas went to be alone. And then went to the priest, the very folk who were trying to sell out Jesus. It's not your sin that does you in. It's where you go after you sin. And not just where your body goes. Where does your mind go after you fall? Well, sometimes because you ain't falling. Falling implies that you tripped over something. We honest. <laughs> Brother Davis, we jumping. <laughs> we ain't falling. You ain't trip. Oops, my bad. It wasn't none of that. You planned, premeditated, bought the tickets, got the room, got the outfit and everything. You ain't fall, you jumped. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. <laughs> Tell the truth, shame the devil. Why y'all acting so fake in here? Most of your problems ain't because you failed. It wasn't no accident. It wasn't no mistake. Oops, how I get in here? <laughs> Take y'all mind out of here. Y'all, y'all the same. You jumped feet first. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> y'all stop, stop, stop. Let's get back into this text. Y'all are <laughs> my holy water, y'all. <laughs> but the problem is, after you fall or jump or whatever you do, what is it like afterwards? Huh? Because I tell you what, if you're not careful, the, your, your, your stress is never going to say it's enough. We're we not going to think about this anymore. Stress is not designed to do that. Stress is like a snowflake that turns into a snowball. You're not careful. A snowball, a snowflake turns to a snowball that would turn into an avalanche. All right, and and the barren womb. I I may preach this thing one day, and this this may get real deep on some people because uh everybody who may have a a barren womb. It's not always barren. Um, a barren womb describes, uh, in the traditional definition, a woman who has not given birth. Right? Some people say whoever never conceived, but some say just that the womb has never had anything go through it or grow out of it. Right? Meaning that. You can get pregnant, but you may lose the child, right? Um, or, and we all grown, um, you did not lose the child. You terminated the pregnancy, right? You, you terminated the pregnancy. Um, and that's uh, yeah, yeah. This is this is this is this is this is the kind of deep part of it. Um, what we need to know, we understand what the emotional, mental, barren womb is, the emptiness, the 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 the, the, the unfulfilled purpose. 
But I want you to know, just because something has not come through your womb does not mean you have not given birth. That's a word all by itself. Well, I may preach that. I may not. I may stop right here and preach that some Sunday. But if y'all act like y'all hear it for the first time when I preach it, y'all just shout with me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and finish this because I know somebody wants to know how is it that even though nothing comes through your womb, you still not barren. There is this term, this biological term called fetal microchimerism. Y'all heard that? Fetal microchimerism, which, which, which is, is a, a, a fancy word, a fancy phrase that, 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 that talks about the, it describes the low level number of fetal cells harboring in the maternal blood stream from any time anytime a baby was conceived. This fetal microchimerism. There's also a paternal microchimerism. I'll talk about that later. Y'all may not want to hear about that. But the fetal one says this is a biological fact. Anytime you have been pregnant with child, uh, sperm, goes inside an egg, and you have conceived a child, whether you ever, never gave birth to that child through your womb. Fetal microchimerism says, and it's, it's been proven, that, 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 that the fetal cells, fetal cells, the baby cells, stay in the mother's body. For 10, 14, sometimes 20 plus years. After the baby is terminated or lost. So guess what? That baby is still inside of you. Even though it never came out of you. The cells from that baby still inside of you. You ain't lost it. You ain't terminus. It's still living inside of you. And guess what else gets making you goosebumps? Doctors have found that when the mother, when the mother gets sick, when the mother catches a cold, when the mother gets hurt, what cells are the first ones to go with the white blood cells to help heal? That mother, those fetal cells are the first ones. So even children you hang birth are inside of you. And when you get sick, they helping you stay alive. Even if you lost them or terminate, can you imagine? Lord have mercy. They keeping you alive. Your children that you conceive still inside of your DNA. They in your bloodstream right now. And guess what, mama? You in theirs. You know, somehow you had that feeling that your mama watching you, looking over your shoulder. <laughs> but it's actually because she in your shoulder. 
<laughs> you know, your mama just call you, baby, I got a feeling you've just been doing some, going through some things. They're connected to you. They inside of you. And you inside of them. I mean, my cells. You know, I'm 40 years old. And my mama. And if I die tonight, God forbid, guess what? I'm still living inside of her. That's the connection with mother and child. Even children you don't even bring out of your womb still inside of you. That's deep. That's, 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 Brother Cecil, that I said a whole lot of stuff before when Bible said it. That's one of the deepest. I'm going to tell you something else, lady. There's also something called paternal microchemerism. Y'all ain't going to like me for this. The daddies. Of them babies. <laughs> oh Lord, have mercy. Y'all about to leave now. Their cells. Don't get mad at me, get mad at science. Their cells stay inside of the woman. Y'all like, <laughs> those are church are open. We can go. Y'all ready to leave now. Y'all want to get a detox of your whole cell though. I want to clean my cells out. He ain't no good. His cells, are, if, you, if you got pregnant by this brother, whether you had the baby or not, the cells of him, and they live longer than a child's cell. They stay there at least 20 something, 30, 30 years. This is science. Don't take my word for it. You may not want to hear it, but however, time, however many times you got, don't, even, don't talk about the ones you gave birth to, however many times you got pregnant, the baby stays, and the daddy stays. Now, you don't this, you know how you, your sales mother are in the baby. The, the men don't get your cells in them. So you don't know what the men doing. You have no intuition about their life. <laughs> they go on, do whatever they want to do, without feeling your presence anywhere. <laughs> but you still got them jack legs inside of you. And the Bible calls it soul time. Hmm? And now we find out it's scientific. You won. You won. So I don't want to get in your business how many, if you ever terminate a pregnancy, but just know that baby still lives inside of you. And when you get sick, the baby cells. Or even if you not if you term, even if you just lost a baby, that baby is not your angel. Going to the places in your body that you are most ill. So don't you think, well, I'm so depressed, I can't be a member in the church. I done done this, I done done that. It still lives. And it's still blessing you. Is still blessing, blessing you. Verse 17. This and what I just said now makes verse 17 that much more important. The eye that mocks at his father and despises to obey his mother or scorns obedience to his mother. The ravens of the valley shall pick it out, and the young eagles shall eat it. If I had just read that without stating what I just stated, you wouldn't understand why it is so abominable to God when children disrespect their parents. The eye that mocks 
his father. You would not even be alive if his seed did not fertilize the egg. And you will mock your own father. I don't care how bad or how terrible he is. The Bible says uh, when you, uh, the eye that mocks his father will be plucked out by a raven and eaten by a young eagle and despises to obey his mother. And some, 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 some Bibles uh, actually use the phrase old mother. Yeah. I guess, I guess somebody's spouse, wife smacked them upside the head when they typed in old mother, so they took that word out and just left and scorned his mother. That I, the ravens of the valley will pick it out. It basically is talking about how terrible and how foolish a person must be to mock their mother, to mock their father and scorn obedience to their mother. Now, I understand, I didn't understand when I first read it, because I'm like, well, why, why is it not bad to scorn obedience to your daddy? Because, well, you know, daddies, we always tell them boys, children what to do. I know I tell mine all the time. But sometimes I know the task may seem mundane. I remember watching a documentary about the Jackson 5 and how Joe Jackson would have Michael and Tito and whatever those other boys' names are, um, stacking bricks, just doing dumb stuff. Sometimes, Dad, as we ask our kids to do dumb stuff, I get it, but it's still meant to be done. But your mother only asks you to do things that you need to do. So when you find yourself disobeying your mother, you're scorning your mother's advice. No, oh, no, you don't need them eyes. You blind. You blind anyway, may as well be blind physically. When you start mocking your daddy and scorning your mother's advice, mm-mm. And this hit me, this hit me, this hit me, this hit me because sometimes, and I'm 40, I just said my age, I'm, I'm up in years. <laughs> and I don't, and my mama probably watching, I love you, I love you with all my heart. Um, but sometimes I get tired of telling me what to do. I do. Amen. Like, um, but, you never scorn the advice. You listen. You pay attention. I say, yes, ma'am. But I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> I got some beans on the store. I got a meeting to go to, mom. I got to go. Because if you are scornful to your own mother, and you mocking your own daddy, you are blind. And the ravens of the valley, hungry ravens, will come and pluck out your eyes. And the young eagles will eat it. There are three things, I'm going to end with this, that are too wonderful for me. Yes, four which I do not understand. The way of an eagle in the air. The way of a serpent on a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of a sea, and the way of a man with a young woman. Lord, have mercy. Oh, they say it's virgin. That one say it's virgin. I'm, I may end before I get to that last half. I don't even want to go there tonight. <laughs> but it's in the Bible. So if I go there, we go there. But it's, I'm, I'm a, I mean, um, three things. 
that are too wonderful. These, 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 these things are too, 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 too amazing, too un, un, unexplainable. Um, they have a couple of things in common that can collectively both be true. All four are visible for a while, then are hidden. All four progress without leaving a trace, except for the man and the young woman, they may have a baby. All four have a mysterious means of progression or motivation. All four move in the domain of something else. What are you saying? The eagle in the sky flies majestically, and it goes higher than any other bird in the sky. In fact, if eagles have any prey, they always go higher, and they go above their prey. Even before Michelle Obama said, when they go low, we go high, eagles have always soared high above. There are some people in life you don't even need to try to fight. Just go high. Eagles don't try to fight vultures or pigeons. They just go high. The way of a serpent on a rock, the, the, the serpent, the reason why this is so profound to the writer is because serpents, uh, they, they, they move on rocks. And they, 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 they hide in rocks, but they move on rocks and can slither. And serpents are very, they don't have any bones in them, really. They, they, they're very slithery, soft even creatures, but they slither on the hardest substances and materials. The sharpest rocks, but they still are never cut. That's one of the things that's, that's, that, that this writer is speaking of. The way of a ship in the midst of a sea. The ship is so small, but yet it's in the midst of a vast sea. It conquers the sea by using the sea. So God is also showing us how to deal with difficult tasks. Eagles, how they deal with their enemies, or ops, as the young folks call them, they go higher. Right? Serpents just slither through them. Ship on the sea, ships use the sea in order to sail. So sometimes God will not remove your rocks, won't remove your enemies, and won't remove your seas. You must learn how to use your ship on the sea. You must learn how to, how to slither on a rock and how to fly higher than your enemies. That's for somebody. In none of these examples did the Bible say be combative. That's naturally what we want to do. Might to cuss at you. You want to cuss back at them. I was driving my boys to school today, Brother Troy, Roland Park. And there was this guy on a bike, cycling. I didn't see him until I got in front of him. He wants to shout at me and my new CD player. That's not the smallest thing in the world. And so I'm like, hey, man, get on the sidewalk. Where I'm from, cyclists ride on the sidewalk. I got a leadership Baltimore event. I was talking about that on the phone, and the person I was trying to get some information from told me, well, you know, in Baltimore, they can cycle on the street. Okay, I didn't know that. My bad. I'm from Alabama. You know, that's my excuse for everything. <laughs> I'm from Alabama. I don't know. Um, so this man, we go to a, tra a traffic light stop. I'm in my car. I'm just chilling. I took my boys to school. I'm about to come. I'm living my best life. Come to the most powerful place on the planet. This guy cycles next to my car window. You know what? I said my morning prayers this morning. I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm from Alabama. I rolled my window down. 
white guy, white guy. Yeah, so you told me to go on the sidewalk. I was like, no, I was, I, you can ride on the street. You, can, you don't have to go on the sidewalk. But you told me to go on the sidewalk. Yeah, I did. My bad. I didn't know that y'all could ride on the sidewalk. Okay. Well, you need to get off the phone. You know what I did? I said my morning prayers. I'm feeling blessed and highly favored. I look at him, I'm like, <laughs> and I rolled the window up. You know what this white man did? He tested my salvation. That's what he did. This man knocks on my window of my new CD player. He ain't. And I'm, I'm like, I just took my boy to school. I said my morning prayers. Me and God had a good time this morning. This man, during my life, I'm trying to stay saved, right? And he knocking on my window. And so I did what they hate. But I ain't doing it intentionally. I was just trying to save my salvation. I ain't know him. I did what I told the kids to do. And I laughed at them. I probably shouldn't have laughed at them. But I laughed. I bust out laughing. I'm like, this man is crazy. Because he really knew what God had saved me from. He, he, he met the right, if he met me a couple of years earlier, Sister Danny, y'all been paying some bail bond tonight. So I went on, and then, then, I ain't finished. Then this joker on his bike, Jay, gonna get in front of my car and look at, look at my car like that. And my feet still on the brake. Bro, I could have easily forgot I'm 40 years old, I'm getting old. I could have easily had a senior moment. Lift my feet up. Right? He gets in front of me. Yeah. I said my prayers this morning. And I just went on my way, turned, and we good. But I say all that to say, you have to learn how to deal with opposition. You got to learn how to deal with cockroaches. Yeah, you can stomp on them. You can kill them. You can crush them. And I was that child that did. When I saw him come out, when I was visiting my folks' place, different places. I would kill ants, I'd kill anything that crawled, spiders. But every now and then, you get tired of messing your shoes up. <laughs> it ain't because you love the cockroaches. My, sh my shoe style got a little better. So I'm not going to mess up my Jordans. <laughs> Stepping on cockroaches. And that's how you guys see your life. You still don't like them. Can't stand them. But don't allow things to mess up what God has put in your life. I just said something. Don't, don't mess up your shoes. Stepping on cockroaches. Because guess what? He's still going to be a cockroach. Even just, just a dead one if you step on him. But then you got yourself dirty. Now you got to clean off your shoes. Unless you track that mess in your house. That's a sermon. That's a sermon. You, 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 you tracking dead cockroaches in your house. Because you just had to step on them. Versus let them live as long as they're not in your house. <laughs> and keep your shoes clean. Keep your hands clean. That's it. I'm not going to talk about the man and your wife tonight. Stop right there. But the Bible says that's an amazing thing. Man and the virgin. I may pick it back up on that. I may let Reverend Davis do next week because I got to be out of town. 
I made her pick up on, <laughs> on that verse. And the way of a man with a virgin. That's a mysterious. The Bible say that is mysterious. Too wonderful. Just to find one. And then stop there, Brother Simmons. <laughs> you are. <laughs> this man. We're going to let Reverend Davis, Dr. Davis, take care of that next week. <laughs> and that's it, y'all. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, we are so happy y'all came out tonight. We are thankful for your presence, and we pray that God blesses y'all. I love having a good time. We, we really want those online to know that we thank you for watching. We pray that you bless, cover, and keep God's word in your life. Say your morning prayers tomorrow. You never know who you're going to meet in the morning. Um. Pray for your pastor. As you can tell, the enemy and cockroaches are always moving. Um, and that God continues to keep me. We want the officers to come forward right now as we prepare to bless God in our giving. We want the officers to come forward. Whatever you can give. If you can give, you can't. You can give it on Sunday or next week. Um, but we want you to know that God is still blessing you uh, in spite of it all. We want to pray now. God, we thank you for tonight. We pray you bless this offering. We pray that it be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen.